Paul. Thank you, God, for the cross and the victory of the blood. Give him praise in the house. Follow the story. Jesus is crucified. The Bible says he entered into the bowels of the earth. And here is what happened. He walked to the gates of hell. Now the Bible says the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Gates means government. That's another 30 minute teaching, but take it. That's what it is. Gates means government. Jesus went to the very gates of hell. And he looked the devil and every imp in the eye and said, I have just defeated you at the cross. The blood that I have shed liberates my children from this place forever. When one of my followers from this day and forever comes before you in the authority of my name and with the power of the blood, you turn them loose because I am the conqueror over death, over hell, and over the grave. You are a defeated foe and I am the triumphant Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Think about that for just a moment. When he bowed his head and said, It is finished, what was finished? The power of death and hell and the grave to terrify you in our spiritual warfare is over. Flip it around this way. We are the only army that's ever marched that was guaranteed the absolute victory before the first shot was ever fired. I like those odds. We are following the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus said, I am the son of the living God. But these, this is the Lord. Get it straight in your mind. The meek and the lowly Jesus is the champion of Calvary. He has broken the chains of sin and misery. And he has announced to the world whom the Son sets free is free indeed today, tomorrow, and forever. I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am the holy one who sits on the throne of his father David in the city of Jerusalem. And he's going to rule the world with a rod of iron forever and forever. Give him praise in the house of God. On the other side of this battle, there are legions led by the prince of darkness. Anything that appeals to darkness is not good. You know, think about that. It does not represent the kingdom of light. The occult is a word for darkness. People love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. The world, the flesh, and the devil operate in the darkness. When you stand in the pulpit and open the word of God, the light starts to come out and the people in darkness begin to resent it. I don't like that preacher. It's not me, partner. It's what I'm saying that irritates the dickens out of you. Well, I think if we could get over here and just kind of soften it up a little bit, maybe we'd influence one of them. Wrong. <laughs> David said in Psalms 97.10, You who are righteous... Say that with me. You who are righteous hate the evil thing. Oh, that was strong. Yes, I'm just plagiarizing David here. <laughs> the Bible fact that in times of war, you cannot expect the goodwill of your enemy. The president of the United States needs to learn that fact. Radical Islam is trying to destroy America. Iran is not our ally. They are our enemy. Russia is not our ally. They do not wish us well. It is time for the leadership of this nation to defend the United States of America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic.
Stop giving $150 billion to Iran. The very day the people are in the street shouting death to America and death to Israel. What kind of lunacy is that? Mr. President, stand up for America. Stand up for Israel. Defend us. That's your constitutional duty. And do it now. You must fight to win. Fighting is controversial. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Say that with me. Fight the good fight of faith. You stand in the winner's circle, not the other guy. Or you will live in misery and defeat. There's only two options, victory or defeat. Christ has defeated the enemy. Now you speak the word of God in faith and destroy him in his, in his efforts to destroy you. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Greater is he that's in you than he that's within the world. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. What weapon did Jesus say Satan would use? He would try to persecute you. He will try to slander you. He will ridicule you. He will get his followers who are living in the darkness to lie about you. That's why the Bible says Satan is the father of lies. And all of the little people who follow him, human beings, are liars. Therefore, God says in the Bible, quote, all liars, not some, not 80%, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. That means if you lie, I mean, you don't tell the truth, you're going to hell. You get that? You folks, no, I won't say that. No, I won't say that either. I'll get right back here to what I've written down. No wonder James said the tongue is set on fire of hell. That means it's set on fire by the devil himself. The devil anoints his followers to lie and slander you, to manufacture the lie and get other people to repeat it. I have had that happen in my ministry. I had a witch sit in my office one day. She was a witch. I'm not calling her that. She said, I'm a witch. <laughs> she didn't have to wear a sign. I, could, I knew it, but it's always good to hear people confess the truth. And she said, I sit in your church, and I listen to you preach, and I go out and twist what you preach to other people, and they repeat it. She said, that's my ministry, and she left, and she was good at what she did. Hmm. The agony is that God's gullible children, oh, really? Let me tell you, people who gossip to you will gossip about you. And if there's something about your ears that look like a garbage can, they'll come right over there and fill it. Let me teach you a wonderful phrase that I learned years ago that will bless you. This conversation is over. Goodbye. Click. Frankly, I don't see society. We, we are living right now in, in the world that says if you mindless Christians would just simply get in the step with these intellectual secular humanists and cease to be obstructionist from social progress, we could have a progressive society. Frankly, I don't see a society saturated with AIDS and pornography and Planned Parenthood selling baby body parts and men marrying men and women marrying women and murder on an epic scale and rape and anarchy and drugs and delinquency. I don't see that as progressive. I see that as pollution and poison put there by the prince of darkness. Can I get a witness there? Yeah. Let the church of Jesus Christ go to war against the forces of evil. 
I know that it's militaristic, but when I was a child in church, we sang, Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banners go, Onward Christian soldiers. Victory is our aim. There is no other. Let God us bring us together in the unity of the faith, the Baptist the Lutherans, the Episcopalians who still believe the Bible, the Catholics, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, the Evangelists, the Evangelicals. Let us come together and resist the devil until the victory is ours over the world, over the flesh and the devil. We can turn this country around in one election term if the righteous will be righteous. Give him praise in the house of God. We're in a war zone. And the weapon of the enemy is persecution, it's slander, it's character assassination, it's ridicule and misinformation. Those are seven things worthy of a sermon, but get them because they are weapons in the arsenal of your enemy. And if you're going to defeat your enemy, you have to know what your enemy is up to. Woe to you, the Bible says, Woe to you when all men speak well of you. I've never had trouble with that verse of scripture. <laughs> Jesus said, the world hated me and it will hate you. And some of you are of the opinion that if someone dislikes you, you're guilty. Wrong. If you're not making somebody irritated with your Christian faith, it's not bright enough for anybody to see. Hmm. James 4 and 4, know you not that a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And if you're chummy with the world, you certainly can't be in God's inner circle. I'm trying to say this in as many ways as I can. You cannot be on both teams at the same time. You're either a child of God or a follower of the prince of darkness. You're in the kingdom of light or you're over here in the kingdom of darkness. You can't be sort of saved any more than you can sort of shoot a shotgun or sort of be pregnant. You either are or you're not. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Let's talk about persecution in America. We read almost daily news stories of Christians being slaughtered by ISIS, crucified, beheaded, children, people who are being placed in iron cages and submerged in deep water to drown, people that are laying on the ground and soaked in gas and set on fire burned to death in the Middle East. Why? They're followers of Jesus Christ. Now this demonic thing has come to this country. The Christian Post reports from Oregon, quote, Chris Harper Mercer, 26, opened fire on students at the community college in Roseburg last week, killing nine and wounding seven others and killing the professor. Initial witness accounts indicate that the shooter specifically asked the people if they were Christian, fatally shooting them if they answered in the affirmative. Stacy Bolin, whose daughter was wounded at the shooting, told CNN that the shooter was, quote, asking people one at a time what their religion was. Are you a Christian, he would ask them. And if you said yes, he said, stand up. And he would walk to them and say, good, because you're a Christian, you're going to see God in about a split second. And then he shot them dead in the head. That's persecution. That's demonic. That's the raw face of the devil in America. And it's happened because the leadership of this nation has made such obtuse statements as saying, we're no longer a Christian nation. We're running God out.